So as a content creator, as a self-employed person, I want to show you the three areas of my Notion setup that have really saved my sanity so that I can keep my business moving forward and I always have an answer to the question of what should I be doing right now? So what you're seeing right here is called the action zone. And we'll talk more about this when I get into my project management. So I'm going to assume that you already know a little bit about Notion. This isn't going to be a complete tutorial. There are entire channels dedicated to teaching you how to use Notion. So if you're completely new to Notion, check out Marie Poulin. Thomas Frank Explains is an excellent channel and also August Bradley. But to start things off here, I'm gonna open up my YouTube content dashboard. I got this question in a comment on one of my YouTube community posts from Tanyelle, and she mentioned struggling to find time to create content for multiple platforms and staying organized. And I thought, you know, maybe showing how I stay organized and just laying it all out there for you will help you to also stay organized. And I'm a big believer in if you can stay organized and you have a place to put your ideas, then you'll be able to create more content faster and thereby growing your audience faster. So this is a content planner, if you will. You could think of it like a content calendar or an editorial calendar, but it's all right here on this dashboard, which is a project inside of my project database. So up here at the top, we have some information. We'll get to that later. This section right here in the middle is kind of like my top navigation bar of a website. So each of these things drop down and they have a red box around them because they are synced. So I have these same navigation drop downs on multiple different dashboards here. So if I add a link or edit a link, then it will take place across all of those synced uh, elements. This resources drop down is just for this specific page. Next, I have an embedded database. This is really the magic of Notion. This is where the magic happens. I actually have two of them here. You can see I have YouTube Planner right here and I have Video Status Tracker. It's displaying the same information, but in different ways. So for example, this database, if I click on it, will open up in another uh, page here. This is every single YouTube video that I have ever created. When I'm in planning mode, all I want to see are the videos that I'm actually actively planning right now. So they're all part of one big database, but here on my dashboard, I have this filtered so that I'm only seeing the stuff that actually makes sense for me right now. So Notion recently changed how they do their filters. So this is a little bit new to me, but it is sorted by the publish date, which is really just a suggestion for myself. Um, and then I have these two rules here. So the rules are um, where the content is a YouTube video. So it's not a podcast episode or a blog post. It's just a YouTube video. It's going to give me this list as long as that video is either ready to plan, ready to shoot, ready to edit, ready for review or ready to publish. In other words, if it's completed or it's published or it's not ready for anything yet, then it's not even gonna show up in my list here. And I'll open these up to show you the actual planner in just a moment. This down here under video status tracker, it's the same exact database, but it's displayed differently. It's displayed as a board. So you can see we have table, we have board. You can add other views here. This is a board where we can actually move things. So for example, I just, uh, before this video, I recorded a CapCut tutorial. So I could come in here and say, okay, well that one is under ready to shoot. You can see the one I'm planning right now is under ready to shoot. Since I just finished this one, I can move this over to to ready to edit and it's going to change the video status here from ready to shoot see it move to ready to edit so it's all the same data it's all the same database it's just displayed differently and i can see it organized 
in different ways. So I call this my content organizer and I actually have a Notion content organizer template that you can download. Just use the link below to the social video blueprint. It's completely free. So let me open up this here. So we're coming from the organizer and actually going to look at what it's like to plan a video. So I have this cap cut tutorial that I just recorded and you can see up here, I already have the video status is changed from ready to plan, to ready to shoot, to ready to edit. But it hasn't been published yet, so we don't have the YouTube thumbnail, we don't have the URL, it's not sponsored, so I don't have that box checked. So I have some basic kind of brainstorm areas here at the top so that when I'm coming up with video topic ideas, I don't have to think about, well, what am I gonna say in my intro and what is my outro gonna be? I can just drop the general gist of that video in here when I'm in that plan planning mode. So I like to think of the actual video idea. You can see I obviously don't pay much attention to my spelling. I just type it all out as fast as I can. And I also like to brainstorm my title ideas. You can see I didn't do that here. Inside of the social video blueprint template, there's a space for you to brainstorm your thumbnail ideas. And there's a couple of other blocks in there too. And then I have something I call a block script. So this is again, outlined in the social video blueprint that you can download for free. But this is essentially how I script out my videos. I don't necessarily use every single one of these um, blocks, but they're, it, it's like a prompt. It helps me to figure out what should be in my intro, what should be in my outro, what are the things that I need to say before I get into the content. So we have that here and I have a column of what to say that's this, that's where I'm talking to the camera. And I also have a column of what to see. So if I have a video that's going to be very uh, B-roll heavy, for example, then I'll put in the different B-roll pieces and parts that I need to shoot. Or if I'm going to do a screencast or anything like that, I'll put those notes in there sometimes. I don't always do it, but I like having that column there. And then of course, Notion is still at the end of the day, a blank page. So I can put any notes that I want down below that area too. So going back over here to my dashboard, whenever I have a new video idea, all I have to do is hit new and just type my new video idea. And it's going to be in there. It's automatically going to be marked as a ready to plan. If it's something where I'm like, mm, I don't know, maybe I'll do this at some point in the future, but I'm not super excited about it now, then I'll just hit not ready. And it won't even be on my dashboard it's still in the database, but it's not in my dashboard and I can come back to it later. Now, once a video is completely recorded, edited, ready to go, then it obviously gets published to YouTube and then it moves into my blog dashboard. Now my blog dashboard is different than my YouTube dashboard because the databases are different. I used to have them combined, but it got really big and confusing. So I separated those out, but they're connected through what Notion calls a relation. This is my blog dashboard. It's sort of similar, but I have some fancy graphs up there. And I wish there was an easier way to kind of make these connections. But right now what I do is we open up our video topic here inside of the YouTube content dashboard. I'm going to copy the title. That's not the, necessarily the title of the video. It's the title of this project here inside of Notion. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to link it to the blog dashboard. So right here where it says empty, I'm going to hit this button. It's going to look through. Notion is going to look through that connected database, the blog database, and it's going to say, are any of these the items that you would like to connect it to? And I'm gonna say, no, I'm gonna create a new item and I'm going to paste in that same title there. This is going to create a new item in that database for me. And it, it basically tells me, we don't see that. Would you like to create a new page? And I'm gonna choose, yes, create a new page. So now I can come 
over to the blog planner part and I can switch back and forth just like this. I can toggle back and forth. So the blog process is completely different than the YouTube video creation process as you can imagine, right? But the information that you need to create either a YouTube video or a blog post is relatively the same. You need to know the title, you need to have the keywords, you need to know what is the actual content going in this piece of content. But the title might be different. The actual key Keywords might also be different. The notes or how you create that piece of content might be different. That's why we have the two databases connected through that relation. And the cool thing about having these two completely separate dashboards and separate databases is then all of the stuff that happens after you publish a blog post, like going back and updating the SEO or optimizing the affiliate links, and even the tracking of the data, like you can see here I have with these graphs, um, all of that can happen separately from the YouTube stuff because none of that has anything to do with the YouTube video. So the other area of my Notion setup that's really critical for me is the project management, the to-do lists, the deadlines, anything that I need to be working on that I'm supposed to be working on, it all comes into what I call the action zone. And I learned how to set this up through August Bradley, which is one of the channels that I showed you at the beginning of this video. So this is a dashboard that I created for myself. This is like the Meredith dashboard where I have my to-do list over on the left. And then I also have our projects database, some of the items from our project database. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. These are the ongoing projects, the things that we're actively working on right now. Plus I have pulled in the list of videos that we're working on right now and the list of blog posts that we're working on right now. So I'm pulling these things in from the various parts of my Notion and putting them into this one dashboard. Remember I said, I'm always asking the question, what am I supposed to be working on right now? This is where I go to answer that question for myself. So you can see I have the navigation up here at the top, very similar to the same thing that I have on those other dashboard pages, but how do I get stuff into my to-do list and how does it connect to the projects database? So this is my projects database. This is a Notion database. It's very similar to a spreadsheet, which is like the same kind of database that the content dashboard is set up like. So we have the project, we have the status of that project. So my statuses are either in progress, next up, ongoing, on hold, future, someday, or completed. We have the zone for that project. So I have three zones in the business. We either have operations, which is like admin, bookkeeping, that kind of thing. We have growth growth, which is content creation and launching products and programs, creating freebies. And then we have fulfillment, which is fulfilling on those courses and programs that we created. So those are the three areas, the three zones, if you will, of the business. We have a due date, which is uh, mostly irrelevant for the project itself. It's the tasks that are really more uh, due date centric. We have the owner, which is usually going to be me. And then we have a relation, again, a notion relation to another database called action items. So the projects database and the action items database are two separate databases connected through a relation. So if I were to open up the Video Pursuit Society project over here, then we'll hit open as page. Then you can see I have these tasks or to-do list items up here at the top. These get related to the action items on my dashboard or on my assistant Stephanie's dashboard, for example. So if I know like, hey, it's the beginning of the month, um, it's time to, I don't know, schedule the Facebook group post or something, right? I can create this as a new page. It's a new item. And then when I open this up, if I mark this as to do, so this is something that's not done and it's not in progress quite yet. And if I mark myself as the owner, 
Then when I come over to my action zone, you're going to see that it's right here. It's actually under no deadline. And it all makes sense once you have these embedded uh, databases within the dashboard. Now there's one last thing I wanted to show you and that is within the company dashboard. So I have like my own personal dashboard and then I have the company dashboard. And this is kind of where uh, the, the magic, I guess, of having a project database happens because you can have all these different projects going on, but there are some things that are like a one-off project. You start it and then you finish it and it's done and you never do anything again. Or you could have ongoing projects. So that's why I love this system because as a content creator, we have lots of ongoing projects like creating YouTube content. It's not like that's ever going to be done. Creating blog content it's never going to be done, but maybe redesigning a freebie or designing achievement stickers, that's a one-off project. It's a pop-up project. So I can look at my dashboard and just the way this is all laid out here, it's all pulling information from the same exact database but it's arranging it in a way that makes sense for my brain visually. So I made these all pretty on purpose so that they're easy to look at. So I know exactly what I'm looking for when I come to this to this dashboard. So we have our ongoing projects up here at the top, and then we have in progress projects, next up projects, and on hold. Like most organizational systems, it takes some discipline to keep it clean, to keep it going. Sometimes I let it go completely off the rails and I'll go back in and clean everything up and make sure all the to-do items are where they're supposed to be and they have the proper due dates and everything. That's what a project manager does. And I do still use the bullet journal over here on my iPad. I have a digital bullet journal here so that I have my actual calendar up here of like what is scheduled for this week. When do I have a call, a, a Zoom call or a meeting? And then I have an actual list of things that are essentially on my plate. Again, I'm always answering that question what am I supposed to be working on right now? The bullet journal and the Notion dashboards, that's how I answer that question. Now I have a video about how I use a bullet journal, how I do it digitally on the iPad, how I lay it out and everything, but I also wanna make sure you know about the social video blueprint because there is an entire content organizer template in there for you. So I'll put a link to the social video blueprint down below this video and I'll see you there.